Kick.com has become all the rage within the streamer community. Why? Well, it's because Kick.com is giving back 95% of revenue to streamers and handing out cash to big name streamers like Jared from Subway handing out candy to kids on Halloween. Yes, you heard that right, 95%. Compared to Twitch's 50%, it's like streamers just hit the jackpot at a digital casino. Speaking of casinos, Twitch has been trying to play the content sheriff lately, but they're doing it with the same finesse as a drunken cowboy in a spaghetti western. Enterkick.com with its open arms taking in all the misfit toys. One notable signing is XQC, a Canadian YouTuber notorious for getting banned from Twitch more times than you can count. They snagged him with a $100 million contract, which for all we know could be Monopoly money at this point, but still, it's being blasted all over social media. You see, Kick.com is backed by this mystical creature called Stake.com, an online crypto gambling platform licensed in the regulation-like country of Curacao, which if you're unfamiliar is a Caribbean country with less than 150,000 people and part of the kingdom of the Netherlands. And interestingly, Stake.com's been around since Bitcoin was under $20, which we all know the story. Today, Bitcoin's over 25,000 and now Stake's mixing crypto with gambling, which is sort of like taking cocaine and mixing it with prime energy drink. Inevitably, somebody's going to crash. And then, just to put some smooth icing on this cake, enter Drake, with his silky smooth vocals and a cool $100 million endorsement deal from the gambling platform. Again, we don't know the exact actual money being thrown around here, but they got Drake on their gambling site, which I mean is a pretty big draw given that he's got hundreds of millions of followers across all social media. So here's the wrap. We've got Kick.com, a steamy new streaming service with its sugar daddy Stake.com, and an army of streamers cast aside for tossing around slurs like confetti at a parade. And it's making lots of noise. Media is evolving, my friends. Today's newspaper is tomorrow's crypto-backed influencer-driven gamble fest. Today, we're going to dive in to the recent rise of Kick.com. Kick was launched in January 2023, allowing streamers to broadcast live videos for viewers to watch in real time, echoing the likes of Twitch, YouTube Live, and Facebook Live. Early on, many people are skeptical that it almost looks like an exact replica of Twitch. So what sets Kick apart? Kick prides itself on being a beacon of creator friendliness, or so they claim, a platform that takes a smaller cut of creator's earnings than its aforementioned competitors. Here, viewers don't just watch passively, they participate. Perusing the platform, you'll find a veritable smorgasbord of categories to choose from. Games, general chatting, hot tubs, music, and the lot. It's a colorful, bustling marketplace of real-time content. Now, it's not quite at Twitch's level yet in terms of user numbers, but don't dismiss it. As of March 2023, it boasted more than 1 million active users. Which, let's be frank, for a platform that's been launched just a few months earlier, those numbers are nothing to shake a stick at. So let's get into Kick's strategy for gaining users. What Kick has done here is that they've drawn in some of the biggest names from the Twitch family, and this move to the new platform offers us some intriguing insights into what they're doing and a pinch of drama. First in line, let's talk about Trainwreck, or Tyler Nicknam, who led the charge after Twitch decided to give the gambling meta the boot in October. Twitch's ban on non-US-based gambling platforms led to the shutdown of Stake.com being a major sponsor for streamers like Trainwreck. Needless to say, Trainwreck wasn't exactly over the moon when his sizable income from Stake, which he claims was about $360 million over 16 months, if you can believe it, got the axe. His solution? Partner with a rival platform that welcomed emerging creators, and importantly for him, gambling. Enter Kick, the chosen land for Trainwreck's exodus. It didn't take long for the platform ties with Stake.com to start to emerge, most famously amplified by a series of tweets from CoffeeZilla. In this thread, Coffee took shots at Trainwreck for not disclosing the connection with Stake. Shortly after, Trainwreck joined Kick officially as a non-owner advisor and non-exclusive broadcaster. Next in line is the lively Felix Langel, or as the world knows him, XQC. This Canadian superstar has also been seduced by Kick, signing an eye-popping contract roughly worth $70 million over two years, potentially reaching a whopping $100 million with incentives. A contract that the internet likes to say is one of the biggest ever signed for an athlete, which if we're calling gamers and streamers athletes, then okay, I guess I'm now a high-performance athlete. Interestingly, Langiel's deal with Kick allows him to remain a free bird of sorts. He isn't tied down by an exclusive contract, and you might occasionally find him making guest appearances on other platforms like YouTube or TikTok. The internet seems confused by this, but to me, it makes a lot of sense. For example, if you want to get users over, you still need to communicate with them to let them know where most of your streams are now going to be hosted. Party at Wingers tonight. 
Since the move, XQC has found himself on the defensive more than once, especially when the topic of kicks ties with stake pop up. He has become somewhat notorious for his fiery outburst when defending kick, often losing his marbles. Finally, we come to the infamous Aiden Ross, who may, by the way, have less brain cells than a bag of rocks. He has had quite the turbulent journey with Twitch, culminating in several bans. This controversial streamer recently made the leap to kick, creating ripples in the gaming world, but it seems Ross is a controversy magnet. Now, it's a little challenging for Zoomers these days. They gotta be a little careful what issues they wanna take on. And Mr. Ross decided to make derogatory comments about personal pronouns, which ignited backlash from users in the Twitch community. He even proclaimed his preferred pronouns are kill slash them. I mean, Aiden has had such a rough go at it that even Andrew Tate is calling him a bigot. The latest backlash and past controversies have led to Kick CEO to dub Mr. Ross a brand risk for the platform, but still worth it, which the CEO has discussed publicly. So let's quickly talk about stake.com. The Financial Times got a good look into the platform a few months back, and it really gave us a good glimpse into just how big the platform has gotten. As a company whose main differentiator is crypto, they are pretty much your standard gambling site, but instead of accepting traditional money known as fiat for your deposits and withdrawals, your funds come in the form of crypto. As of March, the company is now the seventh largest gambling website in the world, and over the last year, they have seen top line gambling revenue grow 24 times since 2020 to $2.6 billion in 2022. It was started back in 2013, and there's now a lengthy legal battle between the three alleged founders where Christopher Freeman basically got blocked out from the forming of the company and is now suing the company for $400 million, claiming that the whole idea was founded on the back of his ideas. Moving on, Stake hasn't been afraid to spend money on marketing. They inked high-profile sponsorship deals with the likes of Premier Club Everton and Alfa Romeo's F1 team, and they even also went out and gave Drake a $100 million deal to push the platform. So in doing the research for this video, the question we're all left with is, why is being connected to a gambling site such a big deal? I think the simple answer is the lack of transparency and regulatory oversight. Now, I know that those are kind of boring words to hear, but let me get into it. We don't know what currencies these streamers are being paid in and how Stake might be able to change the code in the back end when they're streaming. So in other words, what might appear to be regular streamers playing a regular game could be all effectively just a big ruse for entertainment. And again, we don't know ultimately what their payout terms look like. It's not, it's not regulated, there's no filings, we just don't know. And then there is this gem. In the run-up to the launch of stake.com, the founders took advice from Canadian lawyer Dan Friedberg. Now, if that name sounds familiar, well, it's because he would later become chief compliance officer for FTX. Yes, you heard that right, that FTX. But that's not the worst of it. Friedberg also advised executives at a website called Ultimate Bet, a gambling site that was fined by Canadian regulators in 2008 after staff were caught using software to spy on customers' cards and bet against them. Now, as the Financial Times points out, Friedberg was not accused of any wrongdoing, but given the connection, we can see the risks of a platform that may have integrity issues. And it doesn't end there. Stake.com isn't licensed in a major Western country and it's using crypto. So there's a lot of room for foul play here. Is it possible that you could deposit millions of dollars on the platform Yoink. to wake up one morning and find out that you no longer have access to your funds? Of course, it's happened to other online casinos and it's certainly happened on other crypto exchanges. But who cares if you're a streamer, right? The big risk from my point of view is that streamers could find themselves spending years building an audience on a platform that isn't on a solid financial footing, like building up a book of clients in a soon to be deserted city. But as for the moral integrity of the gambling part, as Admin Gold puts it, who cares? They're trying to get you to gamble. They want you to gamble. They want you to get, oh, they get, they get I don't give, who gives a fuck about this? Who cares? Okay, so if you can build an audience on kick and want to take that risk, perhaps it's worth it. Even if it's on the back of gambling degenerates who are subsidizing your platform earnings. Kick offers a whopping 95% in comparison to Twitch, who looks like a stingy uncle offering a mere 50-50 split. Even YouTube, known for its generosity, only offers a 70-30 cut. And it gets better. Kick.com lets streamers keep 100% of any tips, or kicks as they like to call it, sent by the viewers. It's also doing a quick step around barriers to monetization. Unlike Twitch, which sets the monetization bar rather high, Kick asks for just 75 followers and a total of five hours streamed. So we can see why streamers are drawn to the platform. 
Now, let's wrap it up. My view on all of this is that media is heading in a strange direction, where the best reporting is now coming from the likes of financial media platforms like the Wall Street Journal, Financial Times, and Bloomberg. Not to mention every gambling platform went on a recent binge trying to buy up media platforms, like for example, Barstool Sports being sold for over 380 million and The Score being purchased for $2 billion. Although not traditional media platforms, they have people's attention and that's what the media and advertising game's all about. Just last week here in Canada, Bell Media announced that they're laying off 1300 reporters and media types. And of course, we've seen names like Vice Media and Buzzfeed enter the bankruptcy courts. It's a hard economic time, but those with money still like to gamble on stocks, crypto, sports, and slots. But that being said, not everybody's buying in. Take Pokimane, for example. Who would gladly reject a $10 million offer just to stray away from Kick? Or so she claims. High level, Twitch sounds to me like they have a deal that's just too good for them with a 50-50 revenue split. I can't imagine that they aren't making money hand over fist. But according to reports, the Amazon-owned platform is balking at offering certain streamers a 70-30 split. So what do I know? Are they greedy or is the model just not that lucrative? But if you're a streamer, you're thinking about two things here. A, where can I get the most audience? And B, who's gonna pay me the most money for my audience? Now, there's a third point that I think we all have to consider. And that is this. He who owns the platform makes the rules. The interesting thing that Kick is doing here is when they do sign big streamers to lucrative deals, they're not signing exclusivity terms in these deal structures, which is probably the most important thing. Now, I know what you're thinking. The vast majority of content creators don't even need to worry about signing deals with platforms, so it's a moot point. But still, YouTube, Twitch, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter can all kick you off their platforms for sneezing wrong. The best thing for streamers and creators to think about is how can I minimize de-platforming risk? Taking shots at new platforms like Kick, Rumble, and Blue Sky isn't a bad idea for risk mitigation. So it's probably worth it, at least to some extent. The only downside is wasting your time and energy and of course taking on some level of brand risk associated with what these communities could turn into. All right, everybody, thank you for watching. Let me know what you think of the comment section. Have you used kick.com? Do you think it matters that kick is funded by a gambling site? Is, is there any kind of moral issue with that? Uh, what do you think of the streaming world? Do you think that this is in, in its early stages? Do you think it's gonna blow up? Do you think that kick.com has a nice big future ahead of it? All right, guys, let me know what you think of the comment section. If you could do me a big favor, if you enjoyed this video, please smash that like button, subscribe, ring that notification bell. And uh, let me know what you think of the comment section. I promise you guys, I will personally respond to all of your comments. All right, I love you all. So guys, we just recently launched this channel and we noticed that 99.9% .9 of our viewers are not subscribed. So if you enjoyed this video, we need your help in growing this channel. By subscribing, that would help us keep the lights on and make sure that our crews have jobs in these uncertain times. So please hit that subscribe button and we promise to make more quality videos that I'm sure you're gonna love.